Ninja? Ninja! Ninja! Radio Free America, and this is Uncle Sam with music and the truth until dawn. Right now, I've got a few words for some of our brothers and sisters in the occupied zone. The chair is against the wall. The chair is against the wall. John has a long mustache. John has a long mustache. It's 12 o'clock, Americans, another day closer to victory. And for all of you out there on or behind the lines, this is your song. <laughs> Hey, and welcome everybody to our Daily Gun Show. Come to you live every weeknight at midnight Eastern, and we talk about guns for an hour. So I'm going to move this over here, I guess. Move this over here. Well, I guess I can look at this, and then close this, and then screen share. So I don't know who else is going to show up tonight. We'll see who all joins us for the live part of the show. And now screen sharing. And I was going to head over to calendars.com where we keep track of Second Amendment history. And we'll see what's going on in the calendar today. Today is the fifth still, so it's the anniversary of the Seabees, the dudes that go around building everything for the Navy. The Navy drives these boats around, and then they have to park them boats somewhere, and they kick the Seabees out. They make the places where they're going to put their boats, I think. Or else they make runways. I'm not really sure. I'm not in the Navy. But I do know it is their birthday. And they were created in 1942, which I guess is before the war. So I'm not sure. It'd be neat to hear some story of that. I've never actually heard of anything about the CBs. I think my uncle, maybe two of my uncle, great, great uncles, my grandpa's brothers were CBs, I think. But I don't really know. Anyway, tomorrow is the 6th. And it looks like we got a couple of things going on. It is the anniversary of the passing of Tokarev, so that's the SVT and such. It is also the anniversary of the birth of Luger, so you got a, not, a communist guy dying and a Nazi guy being born. And then it's also the fall of the Alamo, so we'll see if anybody uh, does anything for the Alamo tomorrow. But today, maybe I could draw the Alamo. I was going to draw some, take out my drawing pencils and take a break from the other crap that I've been working on and draw some stuff. So I was going to throw it out there to see, uh, to throw it out there, but I think I'm going to do some other stuff tomorrow. So I'm not going to throw it out there. I was going to let you all vote on what we draw tonight, but I'm going to be drawing something else tomorrow. Oh shoot. I better not spoil anything. So let me stop screen sharing before I figure out what's on this screen here. Let's see, what do we got over here? Oh, that's what I'm going to draw. Hell yeah. All right, good. Now I'll start screen sharing again. So I about half drew this robot van one time. I'm going to finish drawing this robot van. Anyway, wanted to go live and figured uh, it's pretty close to being the right time. But I was in the middle of doing some other things, and this is a good break from that. I don't want to spend all night drawing stuff, but I'll sit here for a minute drawing some stuff. And... BS with y'all, whoever shows up tonight. This is annoying. I'm moving this up in the air. Hopefully you can still hear me. I didn't ask for any feedback tonight, but I'm guessing people can hear me. But uh, I moved that mic out of my face. And now it's up above my head so I can see what's going on on the screen. Anybody know what we're looking at here? I don't remember. I probably drew this live at some point whenever I started drawing this thing. So now what are we looking at? We're looking at the lines. Oh, that's just a really low song, I guess. So in the background, of course, we're listening to royalty-free, attribution not required music off of YouTube. So I don't have to worry about getting channels screwed with, or copyrighted or anything. Got a couple of people showing up tonight. Welcome. What do you got here, a puckle gun? Puppy. I don't think I'm going to bother. I'm not going to try to bother with all of these stickers on the side. Maybe I should. Uh, I couldn't 
inviting people to the show because nobody was joining ever. And that's just annoying to send people links and not have anybody show up. But uh, it also makes the show super boring because I hate just sitting here talking. Tonight, like say, I've got more than enough interest in not doing what I was doing. So I'm going to stop here for a bit and draw. But uh, I'll come up with a better format for this show at some point here. Come on. Yeah, they're corking. Yep, it's that robot van. So this is the first, it's not the first nothing. I think it's just the first robot van, but it's the, it was in, uh, I think it was in the first robot car competition. It didn't win though. Some stupid car won, but uh, at least there was a van in that competition. And I went to go use this picture the other day on a project. And I was like, dang it, I didn't finish this picture yet. So I'm going to finish it right now. Tomorrow, I think I'm going to take some time and work on the gun shops. And that means I'll be doing this to gun shops tomorrow. So I'm hoping that'll be interesting. I guess I'll do that live for a little while. I call it a sportsmobile 4x4. Huh? Yeah, I saw on Instagram that a new comic is coming out today. Looking forward to that, but tried looking for it, couldn't buy it yet. Um, view. Snap to pixel. I don't know how that shit turns on all the time, but it's on all the time. Oh, snap, I was supposed to hit yeah. I was going to text somebody earlier today, and then I didn't at the time, and I just now forgot. Just now remembered that I forgot to text them. What time is it here? 10, 12, 30? I guess I can still text. Finally get to that time of year where the heater cycles off every once in a while. That's pretty neat. Not only is my bill going down, but it means it's not that cold. I don't know if you can hear the heater in the background. This looks like Ghostbusters or something up here. I guess it's because they didn't have a real good GPS at the time, maybe? Black cats out there. I don't know who else is going to show up tonight? But uh, just decided to take a break from some other project I was working on and to uh, draw a little bit. Draw this robot van from 2004 or something like that, maybe. Yeah. 
Scientists are non non attribution required royalty free music from YouTube. So if anybody's got any topics or anything, I guess we can chat. But uh, I don't want to bore anybody. But I got nothing too much to talk about. Looked at the calendar a little bit there. Why did nobody give a reminder of the documentary tread coming out? I have no idea what you're even talking about. What's the documentary tread? Went to my daughter's school for open house last night and saw two projects kids did on famous historical people that made me smile. Right on. So who were the famous people? Documentary tread. The true story of Margan Hemer. The bulldozer guy. I don't know. Probably because nobody's pays attention to that guy. Is he a hero of yours? Dang, 
it's actually a pretty good little song there. I don't know if I'd use it in a video or not. Oh, I like this one too. One was Hiram Maxim and the other one was Sam Colt. Dude, I thought you were going to say something like Jefferson or something like that or Adams or something. Heck yeah, that's super cool. So they did it on famous historical people. So that'd be cool. I'd definitely be curious about why they picked Maxim and Colt. So Maxim, you know, Hiram Maxim, there's Hiram, there's, I don't know, there's more than one Hiram. There's Hiram Percy and there's Hiram Stevens or something like that. Let's go find out. But uh, depending on which one, both of them are cool. So either Hiram they pick uh, is going to be a good pick. And then Colt, interesting reasons to why there's lots of reasons that are interesting to pick Colt. Find the right place? No. I'm just supposed to be looking to find out. Uh, I guess. Calendar. I don't really have a website for the inventors. And then the last month, because they all happened last month. So we got Sir Hiram Stevens Maxim is the machine gun guy. And then you got Hudson Maxim is his brother. And then you've got, come on, Percy Maxim is the silencer. So Percy is the silencer, Stevens is the machine gun, and Hudson is the brother. He's smokeless powder in the United States. Yeah, I guess they probably won't let you talk about those inventors in, in public school, huh? I better save this because I don't save enough. Yeah, the machine gun one. So the machine gun guy is interesting because some people say he was uh, where's the word? somebody who could travel through a wormhole or something. Time machine. Oh, there's some interesting stuff about how that guy disappeared into the basements of London one day and then popped out in America creating a machine gun. So it might be interesting. But anyway, uh, otherwise it's neat because some guy creates a gun just like Nobel uh, thought he was going to end all wars with his gun. That could be interesting for a kid to interpret and talk about, right? I'm trying to get this thing to, I guess I should use these volumes. So um, the Colt one, though, you know, obviously the revolver, but the way he invented the revolver, I think could be a neat story for a kid to dig into. And then well, Colt himself is neat because he never even barely sold a gun. He wanted to. He invented them. Nobody bought them, though. So he ended up dying before really the uh, big, you know, the real Colts, the thing that we think of as Colts. None of that stuff existed with him around. It all happened after he was gone. It was just his name on the company. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, I don't know how a kid would attack all that. But then for me, I'm thinking one of the biggest things that I'm a fan of Colt about is that he's really the guy that invented interchangeable parts. And I feel freaking betrayed or lied to that they act like Eli Whitney did it. Eli Whitney's the punk nine millimeter metric bitch that walked up to Colt and said, hey, what are those interchangeable parts all about? And then made his stupid cotton gin. And now school is afraid of real history and acts like Eli Whitney's the, you know, the good one when he's just a come along nine millimeter shooter. Nah, public school anywhere. I agree. Ow. Am I having a heart attack? Chest hurts really bad right now.
Ow. Seriously, what's going on with my chest? Nobody else had a heart attack live. I'm going to scoop everybody. I wonder if YouTube would end your channel if you died on it. You'd think that's pandering for views. Uh, after Honda and Matt running around doing their like rage panic of the day uh, about the bird flu, I mean SARS, I mean whatever the hell the word, the beer flu or whatever it is we're afraid of today. Um, I was at the store uh, looking for food, regular food, and I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to go check out that water aisle and see if it's out of, you know, if they're out of water. No, we weren't out of water. It was all the little bottles of water, like the convenient bottles of water are gone. So obviously somebody was either, well, I don't even want to say people were buying a lot because if people are buying a lot in Texas, then that means distribution chains are screwed up. So they don't even need to be buying a lot here for the shelves to be dry of one product that could be affected by somebody else. But uh, I don't think Tucson's panicking because there's there seemed to be plenty of water at the Walmart. That was like a fake Walmart, the little tiny fake store Walmart, grocery store Walmarts, but still. But I think I will put a couple hundred, like a hundred bucks worth of food on the credit card just because it is still around and I haven't really stocked up. These are all the weird robot apparatuses that would allow the robot van to do whatever it did. I think it basically got stuck in the mud, but by itself, without any help. This is what the top of Bob would want my van to look like, or Bob wants the top of my van to look like with all the solar panels and shit he wants in there. It doesn't look much like a van yet. It's tough to make this thing look like a van because there's so much business going on. Ryan. You accept that already as being the end of that piece? That thing did not want to stop being created. All right, how am I going to get this swoopy looking piece in here? Do I need this piece in here? So. Let's see, no panic that I saw here yesterday when I was grocery shopping, plenty of water, 
And toilet paper on the shelf. No, I didn't look at the toilet paper. I didn't think about that. Rice and beans and pasta were low. I went into the... Well, oh, no. I went to two stores. The Walmart, I didn't go to the beans. But I went down that aisle and it looked like... It didn't look empty or nothing. At least none of the aisles looked empty. Let me put it that way. That one didn't look any empty or any of the other ones. Um, but I went into a dollar store and the dollar store had everything. Like there was nothing even dented in the dollar store. Now, I don't know if most people are going to go to a regular store and then a dollar store, or if more people are like me and we go to a dollar store first, and then I'm only going to a regular store if the dollar store is out of something or like doesn't actually carry something. But the dollar store definitely still had everything that it would normally have. Yeah. Well, that's probably half the reason it doesn't look like a van. I only have two wheels on it instead of three. Just barely noticed that. Probably actually go down here and look at what I'm actually looking at instead of being in the corner. I also scrapped a 30k ish part today, heck of a day. Oh, I took off work early today, went shopping. My Walmart still had looked normal. Okay, 30,000 ish part that's mine. So, like, something happened. Or you were just standing there and while you were on, it was on your watch, or like you did something wrong. It's not some kind of edge recognition program you could use. God, reggae. Yeah, I could do that, but this is the thing. I'm also, one, it's sort of therapeutic. I do this and I forget about some of the other shit that I got going on. So there's the recreational, like, mind game, puzzle, whatever, it keeps your mind off of shit. So there's that part of it. But um, with this particular picture, let's take this one. I'm going to lock that and save it. And then is this the picture? Yeah, that's the picture. What the hell? I do not like this song anymore. It sounds like a phone going off in the other room. I don't know if I got reggae in here. I don't have anything in this probably but um i have listened to some reggae songs on there that were okay if i would take this copy it and lock it close everything 
create a new layer, drop this on the new layer, get it back to 100%, so it's the picture I stole. So that's the picture. If you try to use the built-in, I don't know what to call it, digitizer or whatever, like vectorizer, I guess, you could go high fidelity for sure, and it's going to look pretty much the same. Looks kind of like well, pretty photorealistic, but if I were to finish it, see it looks like a paint by number set. Each one of these little black outlines is a separate little paint by number. It's like an oil painting. So I can scroll in and you can see that it it loses something. It's completely scalable. It's a vector, and it looks okay from a distance. But when you get in there, it ain't right. There's that. Well, and then I guess I could try undo. Undo, undo. Take it back to its original picture. Maybe one more. There. Take it back to its original picture. And if I try to do something else that's a little less realistic or whatever, like so let's say 16 colors. It'll look cartoony, probably, but it won't look like a van anymore. Oh, that'll look pretty good, actually. So now I could take this and expand it. And it's much fewer pictures, right? I'm going to go back. Do undo twice. No, I'm going to highlight here and I'll go ahead and expand it and then I'll copy it. Copy and I'll make that a new layer. So there's that layer. We'll hide that for a second. We'll go back. Now we'll undo this whatever process. Oh, you're going to undo that too? Yeah, so let's go. There it goes. We're going to undo this process. Undo that process. And then I'll lock this layer. Go back to this layer. Paste, lock that layer, go back to this layer, and then instead of trying the, oops, instead of trying the six color, wait, did I try 16 color? I'm gonna try six color, see what it looks like. Mm. See, that looks like a black and white photo a little bit, but actually this would look okay. That tire got lost. And this tire got lost into the shadow, but if you're okay with just the shadow, we could take apart this one too. So I'll expand that, ungroup all these little pieces, and then attempt to go in and remove some of it. What you end up with is a pretty, I don't know what to call it, like kind of version, I guess, artsy version of what we're looking for. So can I get rid of that one? Yeah. Can I get rid of these two? Yeah. Can I get rid of that? Yeah, can I get rid of that hole, whatever it is? Yeah, can I get rid of this? I don't want to because that would get rid of the wheel. If I get rid of this, for example, it gets rid of all those wheels. So I got to keep that. I can get rid of some of these color chunks underneath of there. What's it doing this for? If I can get rid of some of these color chunks without killing the view, what I'll end up with is still a cartoony version of what I want. But it's faster, probably. We're just getting down and dirty. So if I didn't have uh, the interest in drawing it, and I just need to get done quicker, this might actually be a quicker way, but um, you know, it won't look exactly the same. It'll look like a different style for sure. Garbage down here. Oops, got some hole in here. And it's just removing pieces that are of similar color. So now, without going too crazy, you get a pretty good idea of what what would be left with this version of a vectorization. But what I'm thinking is I'm going to end up cleaning this up, even though I don't want to. I'm going to clean this up all the way and then ah, attempt to fiddle with it a little bit. So, and a lot of these. 
it's the problem is when it does this watercolor effect, this isn't a straight line anymore. There won't be any straight lines anywhere, really. This is about the straightest thing you're going to get is this little brown thingy for this. It's about as straight as you can get with this kind of so I can get rid of all these, oops, all of these outside pieces, though. Yeah. And let's say that that looked good. And if you like this style or something, so that this wasn't a problem for you. Um, let's get rid of this stuff. So now I'm just selecting with the box tool or the selection tool. I'm just selecting big chunks to get rid of it. I'm going to leave those at 10i. I can leave some of these things to make it look like there's machinery on the roof. So that's pretty decent. But you know, you gotta want that look. It's definitely a look that's between realism and cartoon. And I, I get a, just a plain old cartoon when I draw it. Let me just say fuck it and draw the whole damn thing. It's a lot longer. And it comes out looking crude as hell. It doesn't look right, but this could look really weird depending so i'm going to go ahead and copy this and lock this layer and leave it alone so i can always go back to that specific layer if i want just make a new layer and i have a new carbon copy of that little thing i just created here play there and then i'll potentially go in there and screw with the colors to make it look cooler or something So you can definitely play with it like this, and that's a lot faster. So I could group that, and then if I really wanted, try something doing like this. And now I just have a cool like silhouette of it, but if you don't know what it is, that might not look like nothing to somebody. But if you're talking edge recognition, that's what I think of is the vectorization. Oops, what did I do? What did I do? Let's get rid of this layer. Uh -oh. oh, I haven't had any color, so this whole thing is fake. Now, I guess I could take this whole fake thing here and shove it inside of my drawing, right? Or take the one I just made. So let's get rid of this. Actually, let's take this and give it a new layer. Let's take this thing from it and put it in that layer. And that's effectively putting it in its own layer. Get rid of that, leave the colors where it is. And now in the colors, paste and put it right behind my lines. And now I just filled it in about a zillion times faster than I would normally color it in. So that's a thing. And now I could take all of this and fade it by like 50 so it's easier to see with the lines. That's sort of a thing. So that's sort of a thing. Well, I gotta leave it down here though, I guess, because of where it's at. Um, highlight this. I don't know about the colors. I should be able to figure out the colors one day. Go in here and uh, not this. Somewhere in here I could tweak this and I'd have some kind of a little wheel and I could take it from brown to green or purple or some shit. So there's, there's an effect, kind of. Like a uh, I don't know what to call that. Let's see. I forgot to pick a surface to the cab software and my tool ran right into it. I've been working on this part for like a solid week and a half. Dude, that sucks, but I have no idea what you're talking about, but I do have a robot, so I'm an expert. And what happens to me is I'll put a piece of stuff in there and then screw around with it and then yeah if you don't set it to that same index point and you start screwing around it's just going to go off of some new index point yeah that's coffee what the hell time is it i don't think drink coffee. i'm drinking tonight i am drinking 
watered down shitty horchata. So I got horchata out of a carton. It's gross, super gross. Do not recommend it. And then I watered it down because I was running out of it and I still wanted to drink it. But uh, it's like now it's watered down horchata without any cinnamon in it. And it tastes all gross. But it doesn't have any caffeine in it, so I'm drinking it. Oh, he thought that was reggae. Eh, I don't think they're reggae. Happened to see heavy metal from the 80s? Hell yeah, I've seen. I just watched heavy metal, in fact, the other day. Um, couldn't have been a week ago. So last week sometime. If not this week. Nah, I say I'm mixed up because I got sick one day. It's like taking two days out. So at some point, this month for sure, I've watched heavy metal. I think I watched it since I got sick. Dang, now it's growing on me. I don't like this. It's not my normal style, but I don't care. It's kind of neat. I like it. But I probably won't use it. Because I'm so used to my other thing. And I guess one of the other things from before is that uh, doing it the way I do it, the technique I use, makes them consistent. And that's part of it, is to keep a consistent uh, look or whatever to the whole stuff, to the whole project. All right, so go in and color a little bit. We've been live for 40 minutes. Holy moly. Got to go bring in toilet paper so I'm ready for anything. What software do I use? I've only used one version of software, but I've watched people use other versions of software, so I'm like anxious to use other stuff. I don't know if there's a name. If there's a name for what I have, it's the name of the robot. It's like their proprietary, like, I don't call it like baby version of software. I'm sure it's not strong. I'm sure that it's pretty, pretty weak as far as software goes. And I can't for the life of me remember what the name of that robot is, but whatever the name of the robot is, is the name of that software. And it's just the stuff that you get like, you don't really get it with the robot, but you can download it from their site and it's updated all the time. So I think the robot is like, I don't know, it's at least a few years old by now. And it was maybe top of the line at the time, but anyway, the software that uh, I can download is much new. But still, it, uh, it only lets me cut and move around. It doesn't let, let me use whatever you'd call like what a like carve, like what a ball mill could do. There's four. I don't think I can do anything like that with it. I think I can just move basically in like three directions. Or two directions at a time. Or maybe I can, and I'm just not watching tutorials that really show me how to do more with it. But it's pretty basic. Uh, like I say, though, I've seen tutorial or I've seen people online use or do way cooler stuff with their robots, and they use software that seems capable. I think it was Autodesk or something. And the deal is, if I understand it right, and I already signed up for it, I just haven't used it, is that you can use this really expensive, nice software for free as long as you make less than something like a hundred thousand dollars a year. So since that software is really for you know, legit people, they don't care if, like, whatever, like, whatever I am, an amateur uses it, like, they don't, it doesn't hurt them. So they let me use the software for absolutely free, full version of the software. And if, if I start making a ton of money with it, then I pay them. And I think that's the coolest way to run software ever. Because who wouldn't be down with that? You know, and by the time you can afford to pay them, you know, you're going to pay them because they helped you get to where you're at. Holy moly, look, I finally got the band. At least the first color. So there's the first color of that band. Uh, and this is, again, the a robot band. This is the one when they were first coming up with the idea of auto-driving vehicles. They had some kind of contest, and somebody was thinking and made their robot into a band, out of a van. Now, they didn't win because of cheaters. Somehow, some other band, some other kind of vehicle cheated and win, but... This one should have won. It's the best vehicle and everything. Oh, 
watched the thing about Orion off of the home theater yesterday. And uh, kind of neat. I think it was yesterday. Uh, if anybody heard of Orion before, you know who Orion is? Shabuko, yeah, that's what it is, Shabuko. So it's the Shabuko software. Get Fusion 360? Hmm, that doesn't sound familiar, but I think I have heard people recommend that before. It's free, and I think you can... Yeah, that's maybe the one I was thinking of. I thought, is it made by Autodesk? Uh, I don't know what you're saying that is good for. Is that a movie? This robot? No, this is real life. Like this was whatever school, probably. What's the name of that one school um, in Ohio, right? I think it's that school in Ohio came up with this, or maybe Stanford. And it was a deal where uh, maybe you got money, I forget, maybe some kind of grant or some kind of job or something. I think you got something for coming up with the robot car. And it was like a Jeep and there was a couple of motorcycles, I think. And then probably an electric car, you know, like an electric chassis. Uh, there was only the one van and maybe a couple of SUV type of stupid cars. So I forget what one, I think a Jeep or something won. No, nothing won the first time. I think that in the race that this van is from, nothing won. Like none of the vehicles were able to actually do what they kind of wanted them to do. But they all learned, you know, learned stuff. And then they did it again the next year. And that's when some Jeep or something cheated. And I don't know if there was a van again. I think they didn't need vans anymore because they didn't really need a van the first time. I don't think the, the computers would do all this early on. That day. I think they just used a van because it was awesome. They knew chicks would dig it. I use Mastercam mainly, but use Fusion sometimes too for the price difference. Fusion is really good. Mastercam is like 15000 a year. Yeah, I'm not paying nothing for it, obviously. Yeah, or Ryan. Oh, is that a movie? Orion is a movie, but it's a movie about Orion. I don't think it's called Orion. It might be called Orion. Okay, right on. Yeah, I didn't think it was difficult to set up. It's just that I had to start somewhere. And I figured instead of starting with the like most difficult stuff, I would just start with the thing I could, you know, I could figure out super easy. And that's why I went with the shape boo boo thing. But um I'm all, I haven't had a chance to get out there and start cutting again, but I'm already dissatisfied with like how wimpy that software is because I know what this, what the machine can do. And I already don't have any interest in doing the wimpy projects anymore. I had to wait for them to brew fresh coffee at the local stop and stop and rob. Um, it's good. If I had a place local, I'd probably walk over and get coffee. But uh, the closest place is like, it's not that far away. It's like a half a mile. It's a walking distance for sure. It would be a good walk, but it's, uh, I don't know. Do you ever have like a gas station put in the middle of houses for no reason? I don't know why the hell they would put that thing there. There's no reason at all to put this gas station there because it's all houses everywhere around here. And it's, it's just different eras. Like there's houses from the 50s, there's houses from the 60s, there's houses probably from the 70s. And that was probably all of them. So there's like all these houses from back in the day. And there's a couple of schools. And then there's like, I think it used to be like a shopping center, like a small shopping center a long, long time ago. But now it's a some kind of build. It's some kind of uh, 
business uh, that doesn't, it's not open to the public. It's some sort of business where they hire people and they work there, but there's no storefront. And then there's this gas station. So it had to be for that, yeah, that when it was a shopping center, but you got pickups. I don't know when the heck that thing was a shopping center. Definitely before I moved here, because I've never seen it be a shopping center. In fact, it was never even close to being a shopping center. But anyway, this uh, gas station's in the middle of nowhere. So because of that, I don't trust getting coffee from there. I've only gotten coffee there once, I think, on the way out of town sometime, one time when I first moved out here. And like never again. That's like you know, a gas station that just never, nobody ever buys coffee there. Now, maybe in the morning people buy coffee there, but like right now at 11 o'clock at night, I would not go over there and buy coffee. So because of that, I just make my own coffee. There ain't the, the close the next closest place to like get a real cup of coffee from somebody who actually might change a pot of coffee once in a while, like your place, is like the highway. And that would be many, many miles from here. Now I'm not thinking about Starbucks and stuff like that. Those things exist, and I just don't even pay attention to them. But I'll bet you I could go to find Starbucks places closer than a gas station by the highway. Basically, you get it to work, you just use a carbide crate as the post processor. Oh, I see. So, like the emulator or something just needs to be emulated into that language or into that whatever system. Yeah. And like I say, those kind of places when they're middle of nowhere, if they, uh, um, uh, do have people come in and get coffee, then they're the best because then they're probably making coffee more than any place else, really, because they care. Some of the truck stops, though, seem to care the most about their coffee. And I'm guessing it's like when they're in competition with some other truck stop and they really want the truckers to stop there. Because I've seen some truck stops that have some really, really good coffee and like just, you know, they'll go bend over backwards to make sure that you're happy with their coffee. But I used to think that was all out west until I got back in Delaware. I stopped in some state that I didn't even want to stop in, but I had to stop for gas. I think it was Delaware. And they had a, everybody out east knows it. I don't remember the name of the place, but it's the place with all, is it Boba? Bosa? Some place with a shit ton of coffee. And like there's a couple, there's a place called QT out here that has a lot of coffee stuff, like a lot of drinks and, you know, like every flavor of Slurpee all the time and a lot of stuff. But then you got one back east that's even more that has just an, 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 an embarrassing, an obscene amount of stuff. And their coffee selection is amazing. It's like, well, it's not amazing. It's, it's embarrassing. Capitalist. Extravagance. Have I been to Bucky's in AZ? I don't think we got Bucky's. Bucky's is Texas. I have only ever bought coffee from a convenience store once. Nearly exploded. Really? Well, I don't know if that's like street tacos where you have to build an immunity to like the germs or something, or if you just happen to get a bad one. It's possible to get a bad one. Definitely understand that like you can go to some places that they only have coffee because somebody told them they should but they've never actually sold any coffee those places you could get sick off of their coffee probably because nobody's ever cleaned the coffee pot and since nobody ever buys any nobody ever tells them it's bad so they don't know and they don't you know it's just a self uh so self, self cycle but um uh i don't know i think uh convenience store coffee can be some of the best but it can be also some of the worst. I'll give you that. Stuckies is though for pecan rolls. That's different. Stuckies is a restaurant. We're not talking about restaurants. Oh, we're talking about Stuckies gas station. But um, you know, they got a lot of stuff. I went to I ate a Stuckies nut roll. Where the hell was I? Oh, I was in Missouri, I think. And I figured this must be where Stuckey's is.
There's more um, nut logs and shit than I've ever seen before. Different types of stuff and different ways to jam the nuts into the log and just all kinds of different varieties. So I was sure I was at some kind of, you know, I must be at the source. Like this is, I've never seen this much variety before. And I bought one and it was not that good. And then I looked at the package and it was not even from Missouri. It was from some other state. It's like, what the hell? I just had, I got suckered into buying one. Most of them are gas stations? I don't think so. I guess I don't know. But I, I'm used to seeing Stuckies as being like a Denny's. They're like a, like a restaurant. But I haven't seen the Stuckies in a while. Um, yeah, I, when I was in Pennsylvania the last time, I was really just booking through Pennsylvania. So I don't know if I'll ever get to tour again. But uh, if I do, I don't want to drive to a place and then drive back from a place that's definitely the worst thing to do so i would definitely like to mosey pennsylvania is one of those countries one of those states that's uh i don't know it would either be real interesting or not i guess i haven't spent enough time there but it's to me it seems like minnesota you got to know where you're going because there's so many trees and things and it's all flat i'm spoiled now because now i can like if i'm when i was in uh, albuquerque Right at the end of, for, they did the uh, the uh, 2A rally there. And I didn't feel like driving all the way back to Tucson that night or that same day that I drove out there. So I stayed overnight in Albuquerque and I woke up in the morning and I wasn't sure like how far away the one gun shop was. I wanted to see, I wanted to get my bearings. So I didn't even think about it. I just drove up a hill. Like I drove up. And once you get up far enough, you can look down at the city and see the city. And then you're like, okay, now I know my bearings, right? You just drive back down into the city and you remember where you're at and you get to where you're going. Out east, you can't do that. You can't do that as much. If there's hills and stuff, there's trees and things bothering you. So you just don't get above it anymore. So I'm just, that's, that's, I'm just spoiled, I guess. So when I go, went to Pennsylvania, to me, it seemed like I was driving through a big alley. Like it was, most of the time I spent in Pennsylvania, it was at night and I was driving from east to west, west to east, and it was uh, nonstop. So I'd have to go back to Pennsylvania and spend some time. It must have more than forest, but like I say, most I remember of it is forest. This is going to take forever. Once I start getting into the nooks and crannies, all this robot stuff. So anyway, yeah, when I get back to, if I ever get back to PA, I would definitely like to just wander, just hang out in Pennsylvania for a while and look around, see what it's like. Although I don't ever think I can see myself moving that far east or north again. Well, I guess we'll probably go live here until the P-U-P-P-Y comes in here and wants to go P-O-T-T-Y because that's going to happen at some point. I didn't do that. Oh, are you kidding me? I didn't take her out before. There we go.
Uh, let's see. Pennsylvania is mostly small mountain and woods until you get to the far eastern. And I'm thinking when I got to the far east, I was in Scranton, went up and seen Angry, and then went back down to where I was at. And that still seemed pretty wooded. But now that I'm thinking about it, all I did is come back out of New York into Pennsylvania and then went. How did I go? I had to come east a little bit, or I guess west a little bit, to move around New Jersey, but then I went straight south. So I did not spend, oh no, I went to Pennsylvania, or I went to, uh, I guess I was in Pennsylvania, or I was in, in Pennsylvania that whole time that I was going south around New Jersey, huh? I was, went, I paralleled some river, whatever the river is probably between Pennsylvania and New Jersey, and I just drove on the west side of that river, right? Pennsylvania side of that river and I'm pretty sure that river was the border and I drove that down until I got to Pittsburgh no what's the name of that place uh, Philadelphia went to Philadelphia because I went met up with Moon and gave him a, a box that I gave him so uh, I guess I did drive through Pennsylvania but again it was fake because it was driving right next to a river and that was super windy and i know the rest of the state ain't state ain't what it like is not what it's like on that river um i don't know the traveling thing is interesting and um like we were just talking about i don't really want to travel to a place i'd rather wander mosey and in that case yeah i would go south there's definitely things in florida i want to see you got two problems in the south. One is the heat and the other one is the bugs. And I'm not used to the bugs and my heat is drier out here. So I'd have to visit the south like in the winter. And then the problem is SHOT Show is over here every winter. So that's tough because then it's then you got to drive all the way across the country pretty quick. So I don't know what to do about going to the south. But I don't have a, you know, I need to, do something with my existing travels. The goal isn't to just travel, it's to offer insight or perspective. So I'd like to do something with what I've already traveled before I just gain more miles, right? When I first got to Missouri, we and Star had a mini alcohol bottles, truck pep bills, and ammo for sale right next to each other. Nice. Well, you need to... They need to put cigarettes on the counter with the uh, uh, the alcohol and the bullets. Delaware Water Gap. Delaware River Border. Okay, so that's where I was at the Delaware. Oh, that's cool. So that's the same. That's the. No. Yeah, Washington crossed the Delaware. So I basically drove down. Did I drive across? Did I drive near where Washington crossed? Or was that somewhere else? Why do people from Pennsylvania call it PA all the time? Because who the hell wants to write Pennsylvania? Because they write with a pen. They don't even use pencils. And two, it's way faster to say PA. That's why I would do it. Kingpin's out there. Night Strike's trying to act like he's from Arizona again. Nobody wants to say Pennsylvania. That's why. Any state that's longer than like seven letters is too many letters. They're trying to prove something. They're trying to be fancy. And it's, they should be shunned for that. There's no need for that. You don't need all them letters. Maine works just fine. Ohio works just fine. Utah is doing fine. <coughs> that's good. All right, cool. I only was, well, I drove it from New York and New Jersey, where New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania all smashed together. I drove from there down to wherever, I guess I probably took a left, it's, or it went west at some point to Philadelphia. I really don't remember. It was on time ago. Oh, it's down by Philadelphia. Okay, cool. It's like three syllables more than you need for a state. They're just trying to prove something. 
I'm going to show off using all the letters. Probably when Pennsylvania was named, they, you know, letters were cheap. It was like a sale going on. They were like, hey, you know what? It'll make it tough for kids in the future to be able to spell long ass name for a state. Let's do that. And they're like, sure, we don't care about our future kids at all. So let's make the state really long. Unless they do something like Mississippi, where they use the same two letters over and over and over and over and act like it's a 15 letter long state when it's really just five letters. But still, they could have just said Mississippi. Done with it. Or miss. Miss. Everybody want to know what they're talking about. Yeah, Pat Sajak, exactly. See, they could have just called it Mary. We didn't, we know that's her land. You could have been called Mary's. Like, hey, I'm, I'm a Mary. No, oh, you're from Mary. Vampires like lots of letters? Mm, pretty sure they like numbers. I think you got it backwards. All right, well, I'll be audited, and I'm getting sick of drawing this damn van. This van's taking forever. Let somebody else draw these things for me. Um, so with that, I think I'm going to go back to work and quit farting around with this van drawing, and then say thanks to everybody for showing up. So tomorrow is Free Patch Friday over at the Gear website store, and that means that you know, I'm still trying to pay off last month's mortgage, so I'm in trying to incentivize sales. We're going to do some giveaways, and I think I recorded the videos already, so it's just a matter of um, hopefully sometime tonight still getting those things into the YouTube shoot uh, and get those underway so that they get uh, scheduled to go live and explain all the, the fun stuff we'll be doing trying to uh, get some sales over at the store tomorrow. And I think tomorrow I'm going to go live for a bit and draw some gun shops from the Gun Show Loophole Tour for another piece of another project that I'm working on. All right, so I'm gonna quit drawing on this. There's gonna be a lot of pieces to draw on this one. I think I could do it forever. KP. Oh, Kingpin, probably. Yep, count, get it, count. And then, happy Friday. Your website, thanks for the link. Maybe Penn was confused by a vampire. Well, Pennsylvania, all right, is it West Virginia or is it Pennsylvania? One of you two places is where the real, where the real Transylvania is, right? Where is Transylvania? Oh, I thought there was a Transylvania in the United States. Hmm. All right, I guess I'm wrong. Wall, what? I don't know what the first one is, Transylvania, Romania. All right. Yeah, I thought I could have seen, so I thought I could have sworn I'd seen something that there was a Transylvania in West Virginia or something, and then they renamed it. But I might have been thinking of something else. It is late and it's been an hour. So we've been drawing a uh, robot that was used for the original driving around of automatic cars or self-driving cars. 
And I forget which team this was. Does it say on here? But uh, this was a team that tried to uh, win that competition, and nobody did that year. Excuse me. So, Team Caltech. You know, the California Cup. California team. And these are all that robot eyes and sensors and whatnot. Cool four wheel drive tires and stuff. That was a cool picture. So, we took a picture of that and uh, started drawing on it for another project for robots. And uh, yeah, that's what we've been drawing tonight. So with that, we'll end it. We'll say uh, goodbye to everybody that joined us live tonight. Looks like we got nine people out there. Chatted a little bit about the uh, Pennsylvania. And then uh, we'll see you all tomorrow. Thanks for jumping in. Tuesday, there will be good 2A news in Missouri. You mean because of... Wait, what are we talking about? Because they had the law that said we're not going to be affected by uh, federal laws, federal 2A laws. Is that what you expected to come out of committee or something? I guess that's what he's talking about. I think that's what he's talking about. All right, well, thanks to everybody for showing up. We will be back same time tomorrow. Well, 12 o'clock tomorrow. I guess I have to put this button.